just started shooting in 4K, y'all. So we gonna see what the quality hitting on. We is on the road to 500. Uh, we at 405 right now. So I just want to say thank y'all to everybody that has been watching and has been interacting and just been, you know, on my channel. I use the DoorDash, so I'm gonna do two. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be giving y'all a little bit of tea on both because I was doing like thousand dollar weeks on DoorDash and stuff like that. So I got an algorithm for both. I did a little bit of Uber Eats. I didn't like it like that. But I'ma still give y'all some algorithm for that. So let's see. Um about how much do I get paid on Instacart? I'ma do hourly. I'ma show y'all what a short week look like and like when I really don't work and then what a real week look like. So for a short week, I worked 19 hours, 39 minutes, and I did 543. So, we're going to do the math on that. And 19, I'm around 19 to 20 hours because in 430, 530, 549, 543, I'm talking about 549, divided by 20. So, that's 27, 27, 15 an hour on a slow week. On a slow week, y'all. A, a regular week for me is probably like that 700, 800 mark. So we're going to take this one the week before that. And I did 819.66 with at 28 hours and 3 minutes. So we're going to round the 28 hours to 28 hours. And then the 819.66, we're going to round that to 819. So we're going to do. 819 divided by 28. 29.25. That's what I make on a regular week. Now we're going to do a buzzing week. A buzzing week where I'm just, you feel me? I'm out here. I feel like I'm really like, yeah. So that's going to be like my $900,000 weeks. So I'm going to take. I'm going to take. I only have $1,000 week for real. Because I'm, it's so easy for me to do like the 700 to 900 every week. I think I just be getting kind of lazy and I want to get up out of that. Because I used to be doing DoorDash $1,000 weeks back to back. Because it was just harder to make your money with DoorDash. So you really had to hustle. And I think I just get comfortable with Instacart. Because the money there. Like you know it's there. If you want to go out and make $300 today. You go out and make $300 today. It's all depending on you. And if you want to do it. And how you want to do it. So we going to take the. Okay we going to take the April week at 900 923 Okay. So. So in April I did 92352 at 31 hours and 43 minutes. So we're gonna round the 31 hours to 32 hours and we're gonna do 923. So 920 923 divided by what I said 32 32 hours. 2884. So you on average making $25 a $25 and up an hour with Instacart, whether it's a slow week, regular week, or it's a busting week, you know? So, we just gonna see what this $1,000 week did look like. Well, we did 1065.55 at 47 hours and 51 minutes, so I'm gonna round that to 48 hours and 1065. So, we are gonna do the math. 1065 divided by 48 hours. Ain't that what I said? Yeah, 48 hours. You did a little bit under twenty five dollars, so you get what I mean. Like the numbers, how they work. It, you doing over twenty dollars an hour, but I feel like I really probably I really worked for that a uh, thousand dollar week. Like I really really did it because I rarely work fifty hours, and that was almost fifty hours that I worked forty eight hours, forty seven fifty something, and basically forty eight hours in my book. So, and that's I rounded like that just to to give y'all a um a better like i short myself a couple dollars just so y'all could you get what i'm saying like i short myself a couple dollars by rounding to those hours in the nearest dollar because it's just like i would rather undercount than overcount and you really didn't make them extra couple dollars that you seen made you know so yeah that's why i do that as an Instacarter, DoorDasher, 
Uber Eats, it don't matter what you're doing, any type of food delivery service, my first tip would be to pick an area. Pick an area. Like, pick a... Really, with Instacart, pick a store. But with DoorDash, I pick the area that I like, that I like uh, working in. That's your starting point for the day. And what I mean by that is, like, when if y'all watch my previous vlogs and stuff, I'll be like, I'm on my way to my spot, y'all. I'm literally going to whatever store that I usually get a lot of orders from or the store that I like to get orders from. So... Once I'm in that area, the orders flow into my app. I get the, even though I might be in Mariano's, but it might be a, two jewels. I got two jewels around me. I got a Best Buy. I got Petsmart. I got all these other stores that Instacart uses. But because I'm in such a median area, all those orders come to me. I get all those flows. The Benny's orders, all that. So that's what I mean by pick an area. Like pick a location that you like, that you okay with dropping off. And delivering to good neighborhoods where you ain't got to watch your back every five seconds. Some stuff might be skeptical, but you just got to have um, discernment. When you're doing these, when you're doing these, um, it is hot, y'all. When you're doing these um, drop-offs, start early. A lot of people not going to tell y'all this, but start early. What I love about Instacart versus DoorDash, DoorDash, you can't really start early. You got to go off of what? DoorDash algorithm is because it's restaurants, it's fast food. But with Instacart, because it's grocery stores, grocery stores open at like 6 o'clock in the morning. Some stay open as well as like CVS, Walgreens, and all of that. Now, Walgreens, CVS, that does go for DoorDash as well, but it's slower. It's not as consistent as Instacart. Download Stride. Stride is a mal tracking app, and you will, you gonna thank me later when it comes tax time and it's time to write all this stuff out because the, the thing about us versus people that's working regular nine to fives clocking in they taxes getting taken out as they checks coming through our taxes are supposed to be check, taken out around tax time but if you do your deductions and you tracking your mileage and stuff like that the right way you come out on top at the end of pay in taxes while I've been Instacart, it's like 20 some dollars. And that was like only my state taxes. I didn't have no federal taxes to pay because I tracked my mileage, wrote off my car, car note, all that. I'm going to get into that in a different video, but this is just how to start, child. This is just how to, how to maximize your profit while you Instacarting. So let me get back on topic. When you're doing your orders, what I like to do is... How Instacart works, you have up to three people that you can have in each batch. So, some batches you might have one customer, two customers, or three people. But you're not going to have more than three customers per batch. So, what I like to do, how I like to pick my batches is, the first thing I'm looking at is the money. When it pop up on your screen. And I'm going to try to show y'all. I might just cut my app on right here. Just so y'all can see what I mean. So, y'all can see what a good order look like or a bad order look like. So... We turning that on. See? Okay, there's one right here. Yeah, there we go. go. Boom. Okay. So this say $25.87. Two people, 2.9 miles. 43 items, 54 units. This is an okay order for the area that I'm in. Because I'm kind of in the hood. But if it was my area, I probably wouldn't do this order. Because it's kind of a lot for a little. But... Because there's two people and it's $25, that's good. Because that means at least each person is paying you $10 per day order. Um, The distance is okay. 2.9 miles. That's not too bad. But you got to look at the map. Like, if I click this order. Oh, it's gone now, y'all. But, oh, here you go. If I click this order, it's going to show me, like, where it's at on the map and if it's gonna be a long 2.9 miles or if it's gonna really be a short 2.9 miles and what i mean by that is yeah if you know you know you know like if you close to the e-way and it's say 2.9 miles then you know that's really like a mile away it's only gonna take you like five minutes but versus if you downtown and it's say 2.9 miles and they want you to go north oh baby you in for one you probably it's probably gonna say it's gonna take a good 15 minutes to get there who who finna play like that so, this is an okay order. Um, How I choose my orders is how this order could have been a, a great order. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I'll be lazy. But it's because I get comfortable with the way that Instacart 
algorithm works. So, this is $25 for two people. That's good. The mileage says 2.9 miles. That's okay. The items say 43 to 54. So, what I do is I click it to see what's in the items. So, you see if you got anything heavy. Like, you can really see if you got a lot of produce. I don't like a lot of produce on the orders because it's going to take longer because you have to bag everything individually. So, they got kind of a decent amount of produce but they also have like deli things so you have to wait in line to get the deli things so you feel me you gotta have discernment with it's gonna be up to y'all but me personally I don't do orders that's under $30 and have a lot of produce or deli things because it takes more time out of my day trying to shop for the stuff it ain't like it's on the shelf and I can just pull it and go so that's an okay order. If it's a slow day, I would probably take this order. If it's a busting day, I wouldn't take this order because way better orders are coming through. I've gotten a person uh, one order for $90 and it was around the corner from the store that I was at. So why would I take two people for $25, 2.9 miles, the, the $90 order was a mile, less than a mile away. Why would I do that? Can y'all see that? eight dollars and 13 cents for one person horrible i don't take orders like that anything under i don't even i barely take 11 dollar orders because what y'all gotta understand this say eight dollars it's a, so many flowing in okay this is a good one i'm gonna show y'all this one this is an example of a good one i'm gonna screenshot it because it looked like it's gonna go away yeah somebody just took that um the eight dollars one what i don't like about that is eight dollars first off we're not gonna cap that's what i don't like about it whether it's one person a half a person it don't matter but even if it said it says eight dollars and 13 cents for one person one mile away 14 items 22 units that's too much say if they don't have three items out of the 14 items that you have that they have on their list that's gonna deduct your pay so you already at eight dollars why would i do that why would I do that? Tell me why would I do that? Why would I waste my time so you could get some groceries that you might as well have to come and get yourself? Because you clearly not trying to pay nobody to come get it and bring it for you and have good service. So, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to waste my time. So, that is a horrible one. What they allow you to do now is I can slide that and I can move that and it's down here in the hidden. Don't nobody want that. So, yeah, I take orders under, I do not try to go over no four miles. It have to really be a big order. Like, it have to be worth it. It's the same. My algorithm is kind of the same with DoorDash as well. But, um, I don't try to go over four miles because it take you out of whatever area that you chose. And it defeats the purpose of the first rule, y'all. Choose your area. So, I try to keep my orders under four miles and I really don't like doing three person batches but if it's a big enough order like if it's over thirty dollars so this is how I play it if I gotta do the orders gotta at least off back before you look at anything else if it says one person it has to be over eleven dollars sometimes I'll take it the eleven dollar orders if it's like three items or four items and I know that they got that type of stuff in stock. It's not something that's rare. But if it's a two people, it has to be $20 and up. Now I'm counting like $10 per person because that at least don't let me know that each person tips something. Because door, Instacart itself do not really pay you a lot for the batches. Because they pay you for the distance. And I think it's like a batch pay and a distance pay. But the distance is like nothing. Garbage. Like gas getting too high for y'all to play like that. But if it's three people... $30 so y'all kind of get it but I've had so many orders where it'll be three people $40 that's automatically a go you know once it say if it say $40 you know you not getting more than three people so you could already once you see $40 you gotta go to the the uh mileage like where it's saying how far it's in is going and then you go to how many items but sometimes if it's a really good order like a $70 order just grab it instantly and then look because the way that Instacart work is up for grabs for anybody. It's not like DoorDash. DoorDash, you got a timer to where you got time to accept this order. Then they pass this to somebody else. Instacart, 
baby it, it, it's about who the fastest on this app like i have a right now i'm at a right now i'm at a even 5.0 rating right y'all why do i feel like i be getting horrible orders when my ratings is the best like so i be kind of i'm not gonna lie i try to keep my ratings a little bit below perfect because I'll be seeing more money when my ratings is a little under. So, yeah, that's a little hack. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much the flow for how I cracked up my algorithm for Instacart. I go by the location, pick a location, get out early, and have discernment when grabbing orders. If it's a big order, just grab it. See if you like it. If you don't like it, then you could give it back up. You don't have to do it. But let me tell y'all about that. Instacart has a thing called acceptance rate. Cancellation rate, not acceptance rate. Cancellation rate. DoorDash has acceptance rate. They like the same thing, but I feel like Instacart consequences is more serious than DoorDash's acceptance rate. Because your cancellation rate, and they tell you, and I'm going to show y'all how my ass look. My cancellation rate is at a 13% right now. The higher your cancellation rate is, the more risk that you have of getting deactivated. So, my cancellation rate is at a 13 right now. It's right there. If you scroll up, it's going to tell you. It says your account is at risk of being deactivated. Because once you pass uh, 9% of deactivation, they start sending you those messages. But... If you exceed, if you get up to 15% acceptance rate, your account could be deactivated like that. It don't matter how good of a shopper you is. It don't matter. You could be the top tier. If your cancellation rate is all the way up there, baby, I don't even get, once I, the most I think I've ever got to was 14. I don't even play like that. Like, once you get a high uh, cancellation rate, you have to have this ironment with the orders that you grab it. And sometimes you got to suck it up and take the orders if you if you grabbed it because you grabbed it. So here go an example of a bad order, y'all. A horrible order. Can y'all see that? I want y'all to see the mileage. Okay, boom. This says $14.86 one person. That's good. $14.86 for one person is great. Where they messed up was, it said 7.7 .7 miles. Going 7.7 .7 miles for $14 defeats the purpose of getting paid $14 for one person. So, I'm not going to do that. 13 items, 17 units. That Everything else about this order was good. The mileage was the only thing that was bad about it. And I wouldn't take this order. I'm going to talk to y'all later. The bag over here, you over there. If you ain't getting to the bag, what you doing? Period.